So, let's say you are in the forest. It's dark at night, and you walk, and you, you hear a branch that cracks. It's like, so what happens to you? You feel that there is a monster behind you, no? Like, you know, wow. <laughs> Your heart starts to pump. You've got adrenaline. Uh, you get ready to fight or, or fight or escape. So what happened there is that in a fraction of a second, you have reached your peak performance. And innovation, uh, we love that. We love to find tricks to get to the extra mile. In a fraction of a second, you have reconnected to a legacy of billions of years, which everybody has, which is called your instinct. And you've done that for a very simple reason. You've done that to live or to survive. So this uh, millions of years of data accumulated by your ancestors uh, through trials and errors has been used in a fraction of a second to uh, augment yourself. How good is that? Um, so there are many good news about it. First of all, we, don't, we never uh, think about it when we do business. I mean, you've done uh, business meetings, and it's very, very rare that somebody says, oh, let's use our instinct. You know? Some people would tell you, let's use your intuition. But intuition is not instinct. Intuition is a conscious process. Instinct is totally unconscious. When you use your instinct, uh, you don't need to do uh, to think. You don't need to have a diploma. You don't need to have experience. Um, you use it. So that's the good news. And you use data that have been accumulated for m billions of years. So that makes you a super data scientist. Actually, we don't need data scientists. We are already uh, big data scientists. Uh, we never use it very much, and especially not now, because we, we think we know, because we call ourselves sapiens. So we think we are intelligent. When in reality, we are just monkeys lost in space. And, uh, Talking about the space, when you look at the space and you try to measure the space, you, we understand only 1% of what's out there. So it means that in reality, we know nothing. So we call ourselves intelligent, but in fact, we, we know nothing. The super lesson of humility, and humility is the first step in innovation, is to recognize that you don't know anything, so you're just honest about things, you look at things and you try to make them better, that's it. And for me, an innovation which is not trying to make life better is not an innovation. It's obsolete. Uh, we are, uh, <laughs> the world is full of these innovations that have uh, put something else instead of our life, and I think it's a huge mistake. We have to go back to that, put life as a, as a filter. We have, as a species, a bug. We, we believe in things that do not exist. So some writers uh, said that uh, it's a big advantage. That's why we colonize the planet, because we can, we can believe in something that does not exist. We believe in illusion. And it works for us because it's one of our best pleasure. You can buy anti-aging creams if you want. That's an illusion. You do it because you want to uh, reverse time, or you want to be nicer than the, the, the person that sits in front of, uh, by your side, but that's an illusion. And we are surrounded by illusions. We believe in illusions. We believe in slot machines. You know, some of you might play at the slot machines because you believe that tomorrow, tomorrow morning will be better. And so the hope makes the slot machine business twice as big 
as the business of music and movie together. Because it's the business of hope. And we, and we uh, sapiens, love to hope that something is going to change. We hoped that our economy will thrive forever. Too bad we base our economy on a limited resource. But I will explain that uh, later on. Um, we checked in on this planet some days ago. Some of us will have uh, 10,000 nights. Some, other, some of us will have 20,000 nights. Some of us will have two nights. <laughs> I, I don't know. But the thing is that uh, the time we have here is very important. And we cannot waste it by doing something else than to live. And to live every day. Because if you don't live every day, your life is a succession of days. So at the end of your life, you would have not lived fully your life. That's why I, I'm convinced that now we have entered a revolution in, in the way we do business, innovation, the way we live every day, because we changed the filter and we put back the main filter, life, in, in the middle of all our uh, decisions. Sometimes people tell you, you, you should be pragmatic. Maybe you are a dreamer or something. <laughs> but if you work for an illusion, and you are pragmatic, that makes you an illusionist. Okay? So be very, very careful about this word, pragmatism, because some people uh, make the confusion between pragmatism and materialism. Whenever some, somebody tells you, be pragmatic, be very careful of the meaning of this question. Dreaming is pragmatic today, because we have to reinvent a new model. So uh, dreaming is, is our maximum power to reinvent new stuff. So be dreamers, because then you can see a new world, and you can uh, try to make it happen. So if we say the instinct allows us to reach our peak performance, if we say that the instinct is something critical and, and our deep data, what are these data? How can we know uh, what rule to follow? How can we know the codes to use? So that's, that's where it gets hard, but also very fascinating. Because what, we don't know what instinct is. We don't know where it hides. Uh, you don't get into a business meeting and say, yeah, let's use our instinct today. <laughs> but you can see instinct in action. You can see the result of using your instinct by looking at the people who live long, for example, the centenarians. What do they do? Do they have something in common? Do they share a pattern? People that, that have uh, 30 more happy New Year's, what do they do? Is there something they do? Is there something they have in common? Is there something that um, animals that have lived um, millions of years, that have been successful in reproducing themselves and, and staying alive over uh, many, many revolutions and many changes, do they have something in common? And the good news is yes. And the good news is yes, it's simple. <laughs> It's simple, but it's super, super powerful. So that's the, the powerful stuff I want to bring this morning and to share with you. The first code is, uh, you know, you can live three weeks without eating. You can live uh, three days without drinking. You can stay three minutes without breathing. <laughs> so who cares about your iPhone? So. The first code is that uh, the elements are the cornerstone of everything. Water, air, soil, and the sun. So if you design something with something else than the elements, you are not designing with your instinct. So you are basically still in the illusion. Because the, the elements are everywhere, and they are the cornerstone of yourself, of everything of the planet. So this is the first code. Uh, very, very important code, and whenever I design a new project, I start with these codes. 
do I protect the elements or do I destroy these elements? If you destroy the, the elements, you destroy yourself. It's a very, very simple principle, but very powerful principle. The second one is that everything is connected. It's the connection code. The connection code, let's say you breathe now. Everybody's breathing. So you take CO2 and you release oxygen. You, you take <laughs> oxygen and you release CO2. And this CO2 uh, in, four, in four days will be on the other side of the planet, maybe in New Zealand. In New Zealand, a plant will use your CO2 to grow or to make fruits or flowers. So what it means is that you are totally connected with the flower of, of New Zealand. And the plant in New Zealand will release oxygen that four days later you might breathe. So the, everything is, is uh, connected. Everything works together. We are symbiotic beings. We are symbiotic like the first cell that appeared on the planet. The first cell which appeared on the planet could develop it if it organized in symbiosis uh, with the environment. And then it created an organism, and this organism could survive only if it organized the symbiosis. And then we appeared, and we can survive only if we create a symbiosis. And then we created villages, and then we created the towns and big cities, and now we are globalized, we have globalized things, so we will only succeed if we create a global symbiosis. Once again, it's a very simple code, but it's a real code. It's not an illusion, it's how uh, everything uh, works. In our cities, the, the biggest problem is isolation. Uh, we feel that we are living together, but in fact, we are on our own. And so, one of the big chunk of innovation now is to recreate this connection between the people uh, helping each other. When, when things go uh, well, nobody thinks about it. But when things go bad, everybody needs that, needs this uh, sense of community and, um, and connection. The third code is the regeneration code. Everything needs to be regenerated, otherwise it doesn't move, it doesn't evolve. When you sleep, you regenerate yourself. Uh, we say that during the day you take care of your body, during the night the body takes care of you. If you want to grow vegetables, you have to nourish the soil. And then you get the, the veggies. But if you don't nourish the soil, if your soil is not alive and fertile, you don't get your veggies. In business, the same. You can't create now, seriously, a business that does not regenerate what it takes. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And at one stage, boom, the crash. That's what we see today. But the, 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 the reason why we are crashing now is that we have based our model on, on materialism, so the use of resources. And we've made this ba very basic mistake, which is to build unlimited businesses, development, growth, right, on a limited, or physically a limited world. So we've made a, a, a junior mistake. Uh, for everybody that works on design, you see that this is the, a very, very, very basic mistake. So there are two, two good news about that. First of all, we have created waste. And waste is probably one of the major fields of innovation and, and development for the future years. We have five times more products that, than we need, really. So reusing, reinventing, regenerating what we already have is a huge, huge opportunity for, for our future. The second, and I love it, uh, it's probably that we can, if you have a pizza, you divide your pizza physically, you reduce the pizza. If you share the recipe, <laughs> you spread it. So it means that once, if you work in, in a material world, you work in a, your development is limited, but if we move now to an immaterial world, our development is infinite. So that's the super news we have in front of us. Uh, immaterial world means, for example, education, knowledge. If you, if you move into these fields of innovation, you, are, you have an illimited development. So the, the debate is not a, 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 on development or non-development. 
the opportunity is on developing now the immaterial. And that's super, super exciting. The number four is the mother of all codes. It's the nature. Uh, we all come, there, come from here. Uh, we've developed all our organism based on our relationship with nature, and we are nature. So if you don't protect nature, uh, you don't protect your mother. <laughs> and so you are really on your own. That's what many civilizations have done. That's why conservation is now innovation. Conservation of the ecosystems, uh, regeneration of nature, regeneration of the ecosystem is the, new, uh, is the new innovation. There are much more money to do with conservation of nature than with destruction of nature because of these immaterial things. If you have a book and you sell the book, you've lost your book. If you share the content of your book, it's infinite. If you protect nature and you develop immaterial relationship with nature, you will keep it forever, and you will make business forever. So that's, that's really a fantastic news. If you go back to the forest, I mean, um, uh, you can see the news uh, in the scientific world. Uh, <coughs> by just staying three days in nature, your metabolism is boosted because you are realigning with the codes of, of your own instinct, where you come from. It's like the salmons, you know, they, <laughs> they go back home and they regenerate. If you go back to the forest, in three days, your cortisol level drops, your tension, hypertension drops, your um, tumor cells, killing cells, are raising by 53%. By just staying three days in the forest. And by just staying three hours in the office, you do the contrary. <laughs> this is a call for our architects to design. We still need offices, of course but we need offices which are designed very, very differently. Yeah? That's why the Google and the, uh, and the Amazon are, are creating now greenhouses where you can work and, and do many things because they, they understand that. They know the science and they know that they can get more from us <laughs> if, we, if we have plants and we live in the forest rather than if, we're, if we are stuck in a, in a square of, uh, of concrete. And the last code I want to share and that comes from the instinct is the simplicity code. Uh, you know that uh, you talk to your friends and they say, oh, no, sorry, I'm busy. Um, that's more of a code uh, <laughs> to recognize who is in the same community. But when you say, uh, when now you say, I'm busy, busy is the new silly. <laughs> so if you don't have time for your friends or you don't have time for your family, you don't have time to care for life, uh, your lifestyle, lifestyle is, a, is a bit obsolete. You're probably uh, more in the, of the, of the, <laughs> in the silly part uh, of, uh, of the community now. Living simply is the solution, is one of the solutions we, we saw in materiality, but living si simply gives you so much joy and pride. Some of you are, are using your instinct and uh, you probably stopped flying now. You, start, you probably started to eat more broccolis <laughs> or maybe do some lemon juice in the morning. <laughs> All these things are instinctive reaction to the environment. So some of them are conscious, some of them are non-conscious. What happens is that we are back in a survival mode. This is why using our instinct and knowing what the instinct means is super important. And knowing what the codes are important to redesign our new model, uh, new businesses, and invention, and innovations. At the end, it's very simple. Whenever you study a business or you have a project, you ask yourself these three questions. Is it good for me? Is it good for life? Is it good for the planet? That's it. <laughs> if you answer the three questions, yes, you have a good design and you can carry on. Uh, you are modern. You, you know what's real and you, you are working pragmatically in the reality and not in the uh, illusion. And maybe I forget something, but uh, one of the advice of, that comes from our instinct, you know, things in real life takes time. So we are speeding all the time. And, but in fact, things take time. So my message to you is whenever you design something now, a new project, innovation, you design your own life, 
don't think about the next week. Think about the next thousand years. Build your master, master plan based on 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years. That will help you to go deep, deep into the meaning of what you do. And you will see that once you change the scale and you do something for the next thousand years, it, it's very clear that our priority and what really matters for us all is our life. It has been an honor to be with you this morning. Thank you. Salut. Ça va Ça va Oui. Tu as, talk, tu as fait un talk en anglais, mais on a à peine noté que tu étais français. Tu as le... Tu as, tu... Oui, on va voir, mais on est... On est we are globalized. <rire> J'ai deux questions. Alors, ils m'ont dit qu'on était en retard, mais j'ai quand même deux petites questions. Tu peux pas me laisser comme ça. Vas-y. Tu, tu vis dans ton jardin, tu manges tes légumes, oui. tu adores tes abeilles. Tu m'as as, aspergé d'huiles essentielles de lavande. C'est juste. Vous pourrez me retrouver à la trace, comme ça, à la pause. Euh, comment tu connectes cet univers, toi, dans ton jardin, en fait Alors, moi, j'ai utilisé ça pour désigner ma vie. C'est de ça dont je crois <rire> que tu me parles. <rire> Donc, c'est... Moi, je m'en suis servi comme cobaye. Euh, donc, il faut reséquencer sa journée, simplement, en fonction de ce qu'on aime. Et ce qu on, ce qu on... Donc, c'est un peu, pour ceux qui connaissent, c'est un peu le, le principe de l'ikigai japonais. Euh, voilà. Donc, il faut essayer de trouver l'équilibre entre... Alors, il faut faire ce qu'on aime, ça, il faut essayer. Euh, ça, on n'a pas le choix, de toute façon, c'est le, le quest numéro un. Et puis, si on fait ce qu'on aime, il faut essayer d'en faire euh, sa, sa vie et puis, en même temps, de, 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 de créer une source de revenus économiques et puis de, de survie économique financière. Quoi. Donc, il faut arriver à, à coupler les trois. À connecter tout ça. À connecter les trois. Alors, moi, ce que, souvent, ce, que, ce qui paraît évident, c'est que quand on, on fait ce qu'on aime, eh ben, on, on émet une, une aura qui fait qu'on est déjà... On, on, on développe une énergie qui est euh, incroyable et donc on devient bon. Alors, il faut travailler, évidemment, beaucoup. <rire> C'est un peu la clé de tout, mais euh, en même temps, les autres le reconnaissent et puis sont intéressés. Et puis, plus on est bon, plus on a des choses peut-être intéressantes à raconter. Donc, plus ça marche. Et puis, voilà, ça fait boule de neige. Bon, donc, euh, voilà. et dernière question, parce que je suis quand même obligé. Tu as travaillé avec Steve, oui. qui est, est l'idole de tout le monde. Euh, <rire> obligatoirement. <rire> obligatoirement. Comment c'était C'était dur et non, non, c'était super facile. Non, non, il fallait être bon Et Il fallait être instinctif. Ouais, okay. Il fallait être instinctif. C'est le genre de personne, s'ils si, 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 euh, sentent que, que tu ne euh, crois pas en ce que tu dis, tu es mort. En une seconde, une, une fraction de seconde, c'était un peu l'expérience de la forêt. Euh, par contre, si tu crois en ce que tu fais, si tu es... Euh, alors, j'ai horreur de ce terme de human Center design. Vous avez, vous avez compris qu'on <rire> est quand même 0,001% de la réalité de la planète. Donc, euh, dire que maintenant, on va designer pour les humains, c'est un peu, un peu crazy. Euh, c'est un peu euh, old-fashioned, <rire> vintage, okay. on va dire comme ça. Euh, mais non, Steve, c'est des rouleaux compresseurs, c'est des moteurs, c'est des, des gens avec lesquels on adore travailler. Quoi. Ça t'a appris justement cette... Euh... Oui, parce que lui, il a fait une boucle et puis il est revenu là-dessus à la fin de sa vie. Et donc, ça me... on fait souvent ça. Hein. On, on se perd dans les illusions. Et puis, à la fin de sa vie, on se dit, mais qu'est-ce qui est important pour nous Et puis, il l'a dit, il l'a dit, il a clairement dit, et on trouve ça. Donc, il vaut mieux trouver ça le plus tôt possible dans sa vie. C'est ça ton message, en fait. <rire> C'est un peu mon message, Il ouais. faut, faut essayer de faire ça le plus tôt dans sa vie pour... Euh, voilà, parce qu'on ne sait pas ce qu'on qu va devenir, quoi. Voilà. Merci, Fabrice. Ouais, merci à toi. Top. Merci. Merci.